Researchers from Stanford, NVIDIA, and Caltech have released a new artificial intelligence model that allows a robotic arm to generalize from real-world observations in order to successfully manipulate objects with different appearances and dynamics into a target configuration. This serves as a breakthrough for robotic gripping devices to accurately manipulate objects in settings such as factories and warehouses while performing pick-and-place tasks such as packaging and sorting. This AI model, which was trained with NVIDIA's Omniverse Plush Sim Simulation, is called ACID, which stands for Action Conditional Implicit Visual Dynamics for Deformable Object Manipulation. NVIDIA's Plush Sim offered the researchers photorealistic sensor signals and high-fidelity deformable object simulation while training the ACID artificial intelligence model in order to return over 17,000 action commands for six kinds of plush toys with 78 variants. These action commands allow the AI model to use a robotic arm gripper to accurately manipulate volumetric deformable objects in the real world and overcome the substantial challenges posed by the infinite amount of non-rigid motions, shape variations, and the problem of partial observability. The researchers were able to simulate a simple one-step horizon model predictive control, as well as create visual showcases rolling out the ACID model, given a start state and a three-action sequence. They applied ACID to real-world deformable objects trained with simulated dynamics, allowing the ACID-based model to generalize to objects with different appearances and dynamics. The ACID dynamics models are successfully employed to goal-conditioned deformable manipulation tasks, resulting in a 30% increase in task success rate over the strongest baseline. ACID integrates two new techniques, implicit representations for action conditional dynamics and geodesics-based contrastive learning. The model achieved the best performance in geometry, correspondence, and dynamics predictions over existing approaches. With the ACID model, robotic arms in factories and warehouses should be able to learn to generalize object manipulation, resulting in a significant leap of spatial intelligence. It will likely also result in a drastic increase in accuracy and cost savings. New materials can be programmed to sense their own movements. MIT researchers have devised a method of printing 3D materials that have adjustable mechanical properties, which use sensors to detect how they move and interface with their surroundings. Researchers created the sensing structures by using just one material and a single print on the 3D printer. In order to achieve this, researchers printed 3D lattice materials and then incorporated channels filled with air inside the structure. By monitoring how air pressure in these channels changes as the material is bent, squeezed, or stretched, researchers can get feedback on the way in which the material is moving. The technique opens the possibility of placing sensors inside the architected material, a class of materials whose mechanical properties are programmed through form and composition. Controlling the geometry of features in architected materials alters their mechanical properties, such as stiffness or toughness. For instance, in the lattices that the researchers printed, a denser cell network caused the structure to be more stiff. The technique may one day be utilized to develop flexible soft robots that have embedded sensors that let them comprehend their postures and movements. It could also be used to develop wearable smart devices which provide feedback about how someone is moving or interacting with their surroundings. The researchers 3D printed an HSA soft robot with the capability of many movements, including twisting, bending, and stretching. They put the robot through a sequence of motions for over 18 hours to collect the sensor data and create a neural system which could predict the robot's movements. In the near future, researchers hope to find innovative applications for these materials and develop new human-machine interfaces or soft devices with sensors inside. They also are looking to use machine learning to push the limits of tactile sensing for robotics. Smart micro-robots swim and navigate using artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence-powered swimmer can switch between multiple methods of locomotion which can be used to move towards an area independently. Scientists from Santa Clara University, New Jersey Institute of Technology, and the University of Hong Kong have succeeded in teaching micro-robots to swim using deep reinforcement learning, resulting in an important leap in the advancement of micro-swimming capabilities. In their study, released in Communications Physics, they argue that micro-swimmers can learn and adjust to changing conditions by using artificial intelligence. Like humans who learn to swim, micro-swimmers also need reinforcement learning and feedback, but with their own challenge posed by the physics of the microscopic realm. Combining artificial neural networks and reinforcement learning, 
the group successfully trained a basic microswimmer to move in any direction. Whenever it moves in any direction, it receives feedback on its movement to learn how well it performed. The swimmer learns how to swim from all of its experiences as it interacts with its surroundings. The AI-powered swimmer can also switch between various gates of locomotion, which it can use to navigate towards any location of interest autonomously. Researchers demonstrated that it could navigate a complicated path without having to be specifically programmed. They also showed the robust performance of the swimmer maneuvering through turbulences that resulted from fluid flowing externally. Such adaptive behaviors are vital for future biomedical applications where these artificial micro-swimmers will be tasked to perform in a variety of circumstances involving unpredictable and uncontrollable environmental factors. AI algorithm detects abnormalities in the brain to cure epilepsy. An artificial intelligence system which can spot subtle brain anomalies which cause epileptic seizures was created by a team of researchers from around the world. The Multicentra Epilepsy Lesion Detection Project utilized more than 1,000 patients' MRI scans taken from 22 international epilepsy centers to train the algorithm. It provides details of the areas where abnormalities occur in the case of drug-resistant focal cortical dysplasia, which is one of the main causes of epilepsy. Focal cortical dysplasia is the areas within the brain which have grown abnormally and can lead to drug-resistant epilepsy. The treatment is usually surgery, however, identifying the lesions using an MRI is a constant problem for doctors, since MRI scans of focal cortical dysplasia may also appear to be normal. The team measured cortical characteristics from MRI scans, for example, the degree of thickness or folds on the cortex's surface. These were then used throughout 300,000 locations of the brain. Researchers then taught the algorithm using data labeled by expert radiologists as being either an instance of FCD or else being a healthy brain. The results were released in the journal Brain and found that overall the algorithm was able to identify FCD in 67% of cases involving 538 people. Prior to this, 178 participants had been deemed MRI negative, meaning radiologists were not able to detect the abnormality, but MELD was able to detect SCT in 63% of the instances. This is especially important because only when doctors are able to detect the anomaly in the brain scan can they then carry out a surgical procedure to cure it. The researchers focused on developing an AI algorithm that could be understood and could aid doctors in making choices. This technique could aid in the discovery of more of these lesions that are present in adults and children who suffer from epilepsy. It will also allow more epilepsy patients to be evaluated for brain surgery, which can cure epilepsy and enhance their cognitive performance. The MELD FCD classifier tool can be used on any patient suspected to have an FCD who is older than three years and has an MRI scan.